Yes, good news, very nice engagement, husband and wife. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Yadavara was filming Prabhupada chanting Japa in his quarters, and I was taking still photographs as Prabhupada walked back and forth. Yadavar ran out of film, so he left the room to change his film, and I was there with Prabhupada. At one point, Srila Prabhupada stopped walking, and he stood in front of a large painting of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And he said to me, such an old man, and still he is chanting. So I didn't know what to say at the time, but on reflecting on it, I felt that this was Prabhupada's instruction, that we go on chanting, that we don't stop because of old age or any other physical reason, but instead we learn to relish the chanting and take shelter of the chanting and understand it as our connection to Krishna and our connection to Srila Prabhupada by following his instructions. I felt very fortunate because, you know, I got to see Prabhupada when he wasn't with his disciples, you know, when he wasn't busy training them in management in so many different ways or chastising them for mistakes they had made and being involved and seeing that the books were being produced and just all these different services he was doing for his spiritual master. And then at various times in the day when the doors closed, Prabhupada was just there by himself. And there are the times that I liked the most because he was a devotee of Krishna and Prabhupada loved Krishna. And you would find him in his room reading and sometimes from the servant quarters all of a sudden you would just hear the harmonium. It wasn't Krishna Kanti you know, coming in and recording bhajans. Prabhupada was just doing bhajan. And whenever I heard that, I would run into the room and I would offer obeisances. And as soon as I would sit up, Prabhupada would just give me the nod, get the cartels. And I would just play cartels and Prabhupada would play the harmonium. And he would just chant. It's one reason I, you know, I stayed with Prabhupada as long as I did because I found being with Prabhupada was just very peaceful for most of the time. And it was amazing because, as we know, Prabhupada was, he was doing everything. He was running everything, the entire society, the BBT, taking care of so much mail every day, doing the classes, the morning walk, instructing devotees. But somehow or other, it seemed like there were hours where Prabhupada was just alone. And he was a devotee of Krishna. And he was very sweet. He was doing everything he was asking us to do, just develop our love of Krishna by, by chanting and hearing and so many times reading his books. He would walk around and chant in his room, you know, just chant on his beads, walk around, and sometimes he would jiggle his bead bag and he could hear the beads in his bead bag. But there was just this peacefulness that was amazing because of everything that he was doing but as soon as the door closed, it was all gone. It was just Krishna there with him. And Prabhupada was, was happy. Even someone like me, you could pick up on some of that, you know, and just feel so peaceful to be with Prabhupada. It's like you didn't want to be anywhere else at those times. <laughs> 